everyone, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. As you can see today, we are putting up a lot of dried bulk goods. This is my haul from Azure Standard. That's where I like to shop for the best prices on bulk goods, bulk goods that are largely organic. And if they're not organic, then they are non-GMO and glyphosate free and all of that good stuff. We are also going to be talking about rotating your five gallon buckets. We're going to talk about what to add to your containers to make them last even longer and be pest proof. And then I'm going to go through each of these big bulk items and tell you how I store them, um, whether they store in mason jars, quart jars, half gallon jars, whether I put them in five gallon buckets. We'll talk about all those things. But first, I want to take you through and show you everything I got and break down the price for you so that you can kind of get an idea of is this going to be a good place to shop? Is it going to save you money? Do you have a better source that might be cheaper? And if you do, uh, please let me know in the comments. I am a price shopper. I research prices like crazy. So if you know of a cheaper place, uh, let me know in the comments below. But I will take you through now and show you everything and break it down price per pound. Okay, y'all, I want to start with this huge 50 pound bag of organic rolled oats because this is really what sends me to Azure Standard and keeps me coming back for more because oats have skyrocketed in price but Azure Standard has remained the same. I have purchased uh, from a milling company through Amazon. I purchased Bob's Red Mill before. Um, I've tried just like regular like Walmart organic oatmeal and the price just continues to go up and up and up and uh, one extremely important to our family is to ensure that our oats are glyphosate free. Uh, oats are unfortunately a notoriously high in glyphosate and if you don't know what that is just do some research and get an idea but um, oats are really dirty as far as glyphosate is concerned and we don't purchase everything organic just because of budget reasons but there are a few products that we absolutely must buy organic and uh, oats is one of them. So a 50 pound bag of organic rolled oats from Azure Standard is $58.41. That comes out to $1.16 per pound. That is an amazing price. Let me grab my list here real quick. Okay, next we have uh, organic cacao powder. This is uh, no sugar added, nothing added to it at all. It's just ground um, cacao beans. And this was a five pound bag for $21.68 that comes out to $4.33 per pound. I have purchased this off Amazon through a company called Anthony's Goods, um, but Azure Standard once again has the cheapest price on that. Um, I have been paying $5.50 on per pound on Amazon, but Azure had it for $4.33. And I got two packages of that for a total of 10 pounds. Next we have uh, dried cranberries. We use this in our um, salads in our homemade trail mix and in our cranberry oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. We go through a lot of them and so I purchased two bags for a total of 10 pounds. This price came out to $3.50 per pound which is a fantastic price. Uh, next is organic pea protein powder. This is what I use in my smoothie every single day. This is a one year supply at five pounds and uh, I have purchased this many many places and it's hard to find one that is both organic just pea protein and not chalky. So Azure Standard fits the bill for all of that and it comes out, it was $38.68 for five pounds. That's $7.73 per pound. Next I have a gallon jar. Y'all, I have a bunch of kiddos playing in the background, so I'm sorry if, for any, any noise, but that's just life <laughs> with the little young children. Um, I have black strap molasses right here, one gallon of it, and that was $24.42. This was, I have purchased it on Amazon before for I think $22, but that price has since skyrocketed since I last checked. We use molasses to make our own brown sugar. We have a video for that if you would like to learn how to make your own brown sugar. I'll link that above and you can check that out. Um, but just to note, anytime that I can, man, my hands are dirty. I just got done working out in the garden. <laughs> um, I just, anytime I can use food to double as a supplement, that's what I do, and organic black strap molasses is an incredible source of iron, food-based iron. Highly absorbable, really good quality. Okay, uh, I think I should say, yeah, I said the price on that. Next is tomato powder. I use, I make a lot of meals in a jar, and in order to make meals in a jar, I use tomato powder instead of something like tomato sauce or spaghetti sauce or something like that. 
and this is a one pound bag organic and this was $14.77. Next is one that I'm extremely excited about, buttermilk powder. I was blown away at the price of this. It's a five pound bag for $17. I have paid normally $15 for a two pound package from Amazon. So to get five pounds for $17 was just awesome. That's $3.40 a pound. We use buttermilk powder for our meal in a jars. A lot of our creamy based meal in a jar recipes use buttermilk in order to achieve that creamy uh, taste and consistency. But also for buttermilk biscuits, uh, I want to have all of my biscuit, bis biscuit ingredients uh, shelf stable. So instead of buying buttermilk from the store regularly, I just stock up on buttermilk powder. This five pound bag will last me about a year, if not maybe nine months or so. Next is 25 pound bag of navy beans. These are just your small white beans. This is what uh, you use for pork and beans. And we also, just in order to simplify, save money, save space, we narrow down our bean options to only three. So instead of something like a chili bean in our chili, we use navy beans instead. And same thing for like other soups and stews and stuff like that. This 25 pound bag was $25.67, so that's only $1.02 per pound. This was an excellent deal as well. Okay, let's get into the food rotation and food storage. Okay, let's go through each of these bulk ingredients and talk about storage. First up is molasses. We're not gonna do anything to that. It'll be perfectly fine in this jug for its life. And uh, I will probably, It'll probably take me all year to go through this, but that's okay. It is um, going to be just fine. It doesn't expire quickly by any means. So I'm just going to set this down real quick. I'm going to package up my navy beans. For these navy beans, uh, I'm going to have to do that off camera because I don't have a bucket. I thought I did, but I don't. So I'm going to have to wait and get another bucket and gamma lid for that. But... Um, for navy beans, for any type of dried bean, I always store it in a five gallon bucket. You don't have to freeze them first. It's not like flour. Um, they, they're not pone, prone to um, those types of pests. So I just pour them directly into a five gallon bucket and I put a desiccant pack in it. I put two of them, two desiccant packs, packs per five gallon bucket. This is what they look like. I'll link those down below. And I also sprinkle uh, a few bay leaves on the inside and then also sprinkle those on the lid on the outside. But I'll show you all that in just a second because I have to do that with my oats in a minute. So for now, I'm just going to set this off side. Okay, next up is tomato powder. This is definitely something that we want to repackage and I'm going to be storing these in quart jars. And normally I vacuum seal all of my jars, but I don't do that with tomato powder because it turns into a brick. Uh, but that's perfectly fine for it to not be vacuum sealed. Just being transferred into the glass is going to be enough to make this last as long as I need it to, which is six months. I actually, this is a one pound package and I actually like to keep five pounds of tomato powder on hand. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I use this in all of my meal in a jar recipes, which I like to prep large amounts of at one time so I can just grab a jar off the shelf when I'm in a hurry. Um, but we are growing a lot of tomatoes this year and we are only hmm, four or five months away from that harvest. And I'll be able to use all the skins from the tomatoes. We'll peel the tomatoes for things like crushed tomatoes, spaghetti sauce, tomato sauce, pizza sauce, all the things. And all those peels will get put to the side and dehydrated to create tomato powder. So I didn't buy any more than just one pound. And like I said, we are not going to vacuum seal this. So this is good to go. Next up is buttermilk powder. This is a five pound bag and that's how much I need for a year. And as long as I store these in quart mason jars and I do vacuum seal these because buttermilk powder is fatty, um, it does, you know, it has fat content in it. And so it can go rancid faster than normal, especially since I'm trying to get a year out of this. But vacuum sealing it takes care of that issue. And I've never had a problem for letting, 
I've never had a problem with buttermilk lasting a year doing it that way. So I think this usually takes four quart jars, but I'll have to see. Oh, you know what? Uh, I need to go clean my funnel real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, my funnel's nice and clean. I'm just gonna pour this buttermilk powder into my jars real quick. I'm gonna get all my jars filled before I vacuum seal so I can do that all at the same time. I was just noticing how cloudy this jar is. If you're canning um, and you have hard water like you live on a well and it, you notice that you're getting cloudy film on your jars, you can put in a splash of vinegar in your pressure canner or water bath canner and that'll take care of that cloudiness. I obviously didn't do that on this chart. This was another item that was just so much cheaper than anywhere else. I like a brand on Amazon called Judy's. I also like Hoosier Hill for buttermilk powder, um, but Azure Standard just blew them out of the water when it came to price. So that's what I went with this time. Whoops. Too much. Maybe not. Just barely. Looks like I'm going to get five jars. Five points. Okay, let's get to vacuum sealing. So if you are, if you're a canner and you're used to canning, you know that we're not supposed to reuse lids. Uh, but for dehydrated goods, that's not a problem at all. You can reuse these lids as long as you get a good seal. I'm just going to you know, wipe the rims off a little bit, put the lid on there without the ring, use my jar sealer attachment. We have a video that walks you through three different ways to vacuum seal a mason jar, so I will link that above, above, and you can check that out. But this is my favorite way. I always use this brake bleeder. Everybody always makes fun of me for how excited I get over vacuum sealing. That's okay. We all have our quirks, right? Okay. We can test our seal by tapping on it and it should sound high pitch. We can also try to lift it only by the lid and that is a good seal. Another thing that's different from canning, when we're canning, we're not supposed to store our rings on our jars, but with dehydrating, that's fine. So you can reuse your lids and you can store the rings on your jars. Okay, I'm gonna get all these done and we'll be back with the next product. Up next is our organic pea protein powder. Um, I think I mentioned previously that this is what I use in my smoothie every day and because of that, I'm not going to be packaging this up like vacuum sealing or do all that because I am literally gonna be in this product day in and day out. That said, I don't wanna keep it in this bag. Azure Standard stores almost all of their products in this bag that's similar to cardboard and if you don't already know uh, mice love cardboard you don't necessarily want to store a bunch of things in cardboard boxes or cardboard like bags like this because mice absolutely love them and they can chew through it pretty easily so i have this is um a container just from an old batch of pea protein a long time ago and i kept it because it's this dark um brown color uh, that means that not much light penetration is going to be getting into it and it has a screw top lid, which makes it easy to get in and out of. And it's hard plastic, so critters, you know, aren't going to be chewing through it. And I, since I'm getting in it every day, I would be able to see signs that something's trying to get into it long before it becomes a problem. So I'm just going to transfer this into this bag. And this would be true for any powder that you're using on a regular basis that you are in and out of on a regular basis. Get it out of that thin plastic, especially if it's like a cardboard-like plastic, or excuse me, thin paper especially if it's a cardboard like paper you get it into something a little more sturdy with a screw top lid i might end up needing two for this i can't remember it's been a long time since i purchased this because it lasts so long okay i have two or three of these jars that i keep on hand so i will package up the rest of that into jars um, this one jar is going to be about three months and i just uh, forgot and remembered 
that the rest of that pea protein powder I will be vacuum sealing into mason jars just like I did that tomato powder. Um, and that's just to keep it fresh as long as possible and I will just take out three month increments into this jar at a time. Okie doke. Next up is our dried cranberries. Now for a long time I stored these in vacuum sealed bags. Uh, the problem is the sugar and stickiness of the dried cranberries when you vacuum seal them, they stick together and are really hard to peel apart. And every time I have to take out a vacuum seal bag and transfer it into a mason jar, it's really hard to pick apart. So whenever I have half gallon mason jars to store in, that's what I that's what I store in. But these are a hot commodity around here. I don't have very many of them, but I happen to have two, I think, available. So that's where I'm going to put my dry cranberries in, and we're also going to vacuum seal those. What I'll do is I'll leave one jar not vacuum sealed and that will be the one that we will eat out of regularly. So I'm going to set this aside and not vacuum seal that one. And then vacuum seal this one. And just wipe the room, make sure there's nothing on there, no debris. Put my attachment on and vacuum seal. So like I said, hot commodity these jars are, so that's the only two I have available. So I'm going to be storing the rest of my dried cranberries um, using a food saver vacuum sealer and I will just be vacuum sealing those into bags and I'll just have to deal with having to pick them apart when it comes time to transfer them into a mason jar and into the pantry. Okay, next thing. Next thing we have is our cacao powder. So this is something that I store in a five gallon bucket. Uh, I use one to two tablespoons of this in my smoothie every day and then this is also for all of our baking needs and because of that we store it in bulk. Uh, I wanted to show y'all, so if you uh, have been with us for a while or if you have our book you know that we recommend a two bucket rotation system where you have your uh, dry good stocked in a bucket and then you have a second one on standby. And when your primary inventory gets down to about half a bucket or a fourth to a half a bucket, you go ahead and purchase a, no, a new batch, pour it into that new bucket, use up the rest of this, and then do a little switcheroo. You're using the fresh stuff and now this one's empty for the next round. But what do you do if you don't have the space for a two bucket system or um, you just don't have another bucket, <laughs> as in my case? So I'm just going to take my cacao bucket and uh, we'll talk about the leaves and stuff on here in just a second. Um, and I'm just going to pour it in a big bowl, pour my old goods into a big bowl and hopefully this will all fit and hopefully I don't make a huge mess, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, let's try scoop a in it. There's my des desiccant pack. I'll show, talk about that in a minute as well. Okay, that was a little messy, but we got it done. So all of the old stuff is now in this bowl. So now I'm just opening up the new bag and pouring it in. This is the first in, first out principle. You want your newest stuff down at the bottom or in the back if you're using like a cabinet or a shelf set up. And for buckets, it's just first on the bottom, oldest on top. Okay, now the old stuff goes back on top. Hopefully that won't be as messy as pouring it out. That's just part of it sometimes. We can clean up later. Whew. Good thing I like the smell of cocoa. <laughs> now 
that gives me almost exactly a 12 gallon bucket and that is a one year supply one year to 18 months supply for our family because we drink smoothies every day and we make all of our dessert products from scratch okay so into this bucket i'm going to put my desiccant pack back that's going to take care of moisture and then i'm going to i had some leaves on top of here bay leaves i'm going to set three of those on top of the powder directly and then on top of my lid i'm going to place a few bay leaves just around the lid and that is going to deter pests pests can't stand the smell of bay leaves i keep a one pound bulk package of bay leaves on hand i purchased this um, from amazon uh, last year and it is still going strong and um, the leaves are smelling still strong as well so this is over a year old and it hasn't lost any of its um, smell which is what deters the pest so that's why it's an excellent candidate for storing in bulk especially if you're going to be storing a bunch of stuff and want to deter pests naturally it's an excellent option okay so I got the, the uh, rim of this lid pretty dirty during that transfer process so before I push, put this in long term storage I'm going to wipe it down really well so that we don't have any of that uh, yummy cocoa smell that will attract critters but for now, I'm just going to set it off the table and move on to the next one. Last but not least is my massive 50-pound bag of oats. And I forgot to mention earlier, I purchased two bags of these for a total of 100 pounds because that's how many bags of oats or pounds of oats our family needs for a one-year supply. Uh, 100 pounds of oats is going to be about five buckets. So I always have five buckets dedicated and free to four oats whenever I am cycling through them. Uh, I allowed myself to get almost completely out of oats, which I don't normally do, but the price of oats have skyrocketed. I'm sure y'all have seen that, and I just could not find it in me to spend that kind of money on oats. Um, but fortunately, Azure Standard had them for um, just a dollar a pound for organic oats, so I went ahead and got 100 pounds for a year supply. So this is uh, one of my oats buckets that is empty. I'm going to place, oh, I still have, okay. So I have my desiccant packs, I have three. I don't know how that got in there. I only put in two normally. So I'm going to put a desiccant pack. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead, uh, these are the date. The date on this lid, or this bucket, is April of 2022. It's February of 2023. So this bucket is almost a year old as far as holding oats, which means these packets are almost a year old. So I'm gonna go ahead and Put those aside and get some fresh packets. I'm going to put one in the very bottom of the bucket. And then I am going to pour oats in here. And I will show you what to do next after that. Okay, I have got my bucket here full of oats. I still have four or five more buckets to do with the other uh, 100 pounds of oats. So as you, as you remember, I put a desiccant pack in the bottom. So now I'm going to put one on top and I'm just going to stuff it down in there. Just a little bit so it's still kind of at the top any type of grain is extremely prone to pests so um, and I use bay leaves for any grain product that's oats grits beans pasta anything like that so I'm just going to take a few bay leaves and sprinkle them on top of the product directly and then I'm going to screw on my lid nice and tight seal and then I'm going to sprinkle some bay leaves on top of the lid itself so that hopefully we deter the pests before they ever actually get contact with the food. That would be ideal. So that's why we do it inside or outside the bucket, but also inside the bucket, just in case. Uh, and that's it. Let me think. I don't think there's anything else. If y'all have any questions, drop the question down in the description box. We're always checking through your questions and answering them on a regular basis. Uh, I hope this was helpful to y'all, and we'll see you next time. Bye.